you're back. Um, let me see. Today is, this is day 24. Yeah, this is day 24. Day 24. Do I remember when I was 24 years old? Let me think about that. Um, one thing I do want to talk about, because I'm still on this countdown to 55. So this is day 24 out of 55. Yeah. Okay. So yesterday I talked about breaking my own barriers. And I felt good about that. I do. I still feel good about that. But there's also some cons to that. And one of the cons, well, the main con was it made me also, I became a workaholic. So yes, while I was breaking barriers and working on some things and evolving and um, making my life better, I became a workaholic at a very, very, very young age. It started um, in my teen years. It was like, so before I started working um, with a permit, um, I, I worked, I enjoyed working. And there were things that I needed to heal from and I didn't know how to do that. Nobody talked to me about that. Um, and it's probably because they didn't know how to talk to me about that. And like I said, in that day, most blacks still was not comfortable with talking to a therapist like we are now because there's so many of them who look like us now, which makes it a little bit easier. So, you know, anyways, um, I got into th this thing with working and it's like I traded one demon for another demon that demon was being busy <laughs> being busy not necessarily being productive but being busy and what it was doing was i was avoiding dealing with things that had caused me harm i actually thought i was dealing with them and i honestly felt like me being busy and keep on moving on with my life was actually proving, hey, these things can't get me down. And sometimes we put a lot of pride in that. But when we are not doing that work underneath this surface and get down to the grit that nobody sees, it could actually cause more harm than good because I was not working on anything on the inside. I was working on what everything looked like. And because I was high functioning and able to go to school full time and manage a full time job and manage my sister's schedule because they were younger than me. My mother was working at this time. She was working full time. So it was my responsibility as the eldest to make sure that they completed all their assignments, all of their chores, make sure they were covered and not into any trouble and still take care of myself. So before I was at this age of having a work permit and all of that, reading became my escape and I just delved into it. And then once I was working age, I delved into working. It was like every time there was a, um, <clears throat> a free, uh, Saturday, um, I would try to work every Saturday. If there was a holiday, I would ask all of the adults, Hey, you want to be off? I work, you know, I said, I can get my grandfather or my mother to come pick me up. So of course they were going to jump on it. You know, it's just, it just became a thing. But at that time, I did not realize that I was covering up what was going on on the inside. Now to, to be transparent, I did not know anything but church. Like, and anyone who 
grew up in Pentecostal holiness, you know what I mean? Every time the door was open, we had to fly right in it. That's just the way we were raised. That's how it is when you're in Pentecostal holiness. Every time the door is open, your high pass is there. It didn't matter if you had school the next day. If church didn't let out till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, you were there. It didn't matter if you still had homework you had to do. You had to be there and you had to be an active participant. That's just what it was. So as I aged and was able to make even more decisions for myself, I did not realize that I did not have the appropriate skills to deal with some of the things that were cycling and popping up into my life, like all of these memories of these things from when I was younger, much, much younger. I couldn't understand why these memories were popping up. And now I understand it's because you get to a point in life and there's this cycle. There's this cycle that happens. And when it gets to that point where it's time to release, some of those things come up. And some people choose to, everybody has their own vice. Everybody has a vice. They Sometimes they can lash out at people. Some people choose to drink. Some people choose drugs. Some people choose sex as a vice. Some people gamble. Me, I was always going for the next job. And it became apparent. Um, my stepmother, she sat me down one day. She said, there's a problem here. And I'm like, ma'am, what do you mean? She says, you're doing too much. She said, all this working. And she said, you're going to worry yourself out. And I said, I still don't understand what you mean. And she said, you're doing all this work. She said, why are you working so much? And I said, well, I need the money. She said, you don't need that much money. She said, I know you. She said, I know how you are with money. And she says, you already said you have all your bills paid up and everything like that. She says, there is a problem and you need to deal with it. She said, because I know you. She said, I may not have birthed you, but I've been around you long enough. I know you. No, this is not good. She said, you're going to end up sick. And you're going to age really fast and you need to do something about this. She said, I don't know how to tell you to fix it. I just know you need to fix it. And I said, yes, ma'am. So I sat down and I thought about what she was saying. And I was like, and I kept trying to make it right in my head that there's nothing wrong with me working as much as I was. So let me give you an idea of what she meant. So I was in junior college and I was a CNA. I was working as a certified nursing assistant. So I worked second shift full time. So let me backtrack. So during the daytime, the morning time, I would have classes during the morning. If I didn't have a class during that morning, I had a client that I saw full-time hours during the morning from seven in the morning to two 30 every day. And that's if I did not have a class. And, um, so I did that. Plus I would clock out at two o'clock or two 30, depending on what time the other lady came in, I would clock in the next job at two 30. So this client lived in this nursing home. All I had to do was go downstairs clock in and get on the floor. Boom. Just no break. I was not giving myself any breaks and I would work and work and work. And then I would go home, do homework all night, get up and start the whole thing over on the weekends. Oh my goodness, y'all on the weekends. So I had every other weekend off, but every other weekend I was working. So I had those two jobs. On the weekend, I had two part-time jobs. So I had two full-time jobs, two part-time jobs, and I was going to school. Yeah. And then I was still going back and forth, helping different churches um, with their mentoring programs for the youth, helping them with their homework, 
because that's just what I did. I, I've always been an educator. And so I would volunteer my time to go to their um, mentoring and tutoring programs. And that's what I would do. And every time there was a hole to get some rest, it's like I had to fill it. It's just, it was just like I had to have that spot full. I did not allow myself to take a break. And so my stepmother, she saw how I just kept pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring and not stopping and allowing me to be filled up. I was busy trying to fill everybody else up. And so that's the reason why she sat me down and talked to me about that. And she was right. I didn't see it then, but she was right. And I had gotten into workaholism. That's what I did. I was breaking barriers, but I wasn't being productive. I was just being busy. And sometimes, I don't know what that is. Sometimes we we tend to do that. Some of us will do that. And even in, you know, in your business, sometimes you can do a whole lot of things and you're busy. Yeah, I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I'm doing this. How long has it been since you made a dollar or two, you know, and you're doing this and you're doing this and you're doing this and you're doing this, you know, how long has it been since you even had an increase in what you made in a year? You know, you just, oh, that's just Lent. Know where it's coming from but anyway um you know you just busy 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 but you're not being productive and what i mean by productive is what are you busy doing are you allowing yourself time to digress and to just sit back and just look at everything sometimes we could be so subjective that we forget to be objective we forget to look at the whole picture. We're just looking at just one little thing. And we forget to that there's a whole picture that we're trying to create with this puzzle. But we're focusing on this one thing. And there's nothing wrong with focusing on one particular thing because sometimes that's how you build. But that's not what I was doing. I was just being busy because that's just what I felt like I needed to do. Now, just as she said, my body started crashing and I started staying sick all the time. I couldn't understand. I was like, what in the world is going on? I'm eating right. I'm exercising. I'm drinking plenty of water, but I wasn't getting any rest. I was not just giving, I wasn't giving my brain a break. I wasn't giving my body a break. I was not giving my spirit a break and my soul definitely was not getting a break. Because I was, I kept cutting into my soul, doing everything that it did not come here to do. Now, yes, me coming in here as an educator, yet yeah, that's something I was supposed to come here to do. Um, as a healer, nursing, yeah, that's something I was supposed to do. But it was the way I was doing it. That's not how I was supposed to do that, <laughs> you know? So... That's what I meant by that. I didn't know anything else but church. That, so when it felt like that I was losing it, that's what I did. I went to church because that's that's what that's what I knew. That's what I knew. So at some point when I got into psychology and I started having conversation with the psychologist and psychiatrist that I worked with, you know, sometimes as you work with your coworkers, sometimes you start disclosing a little bit of things um, as you age or whatever like that. Sometimes you don't disclose anything. Sometimes they can just notice like your brow just raised a certain way or they'll notice certain triggers about you. Like if something you see a behavior in somebody else and, it, and you may have a your aura, it may help change your aura not necessarily a good way because it's reminding you of something and they will watch me and they will put me to the side and they will ask me are you okay and I'm like yes I'm okay and it was like I noticed such and such and such and such and I, I noticed this before and I just wanted to let you know I saw that and I want to make sure that you're okay and so sometimes it was like pulling teeth 
to get me to talk because I've always been a private person. But years went by and I knew these people and I knew they had my best interests at heart and they weren't ones to really go and talk things out. Um, and if they did, they would bring it to me. They would come to me. They wouldn't go to others. They would come to me and talk about it. And I started, you know, I'm like, you know what? That reminded me when I saw such and such. It reminded me when I was a little girl, such and such. And they were like, mm-hmm, yeah, I've been waiting for you to talk about it. They say, I'm familiar with this. And so we would talk and they didn't treat me as if I was their client. They They treated me as somebody that was special to them and they wanted to make sure that it was okay because they trusted me I trusted them and they trusted in my abilities and they wanted to make sure that I was okay so that I could continue on helping them help other people but they saw that I needed help too and that made me feel good it did it did it did so I was telling them about the conversation that I had with my stepmom about being a workaholic. And they was like, yeah, she's right. She's not wrong. But first they said, um, they asked me, how do you feel about it? I said, I don't know. I said, at first I, I was kind of like upset about it. I said, but then I thought about it. I said, I'm tired. I'm really tired. I don't know why I can't not work. It's like, I have to do this. And they were like, yeah, it's become an addiction. They said, this has become your vice. Some people would drink. Some people would do drugs. Some people would um, have sex, use sex as it. They said, you use work. You use your energy up. And it, it's, it's like, I said, yeah. I said, it's like, once I've done it, and even though I'm exhausted doing it, it's like after the end of the shift, it's like, yes. You know, it's just like. It was like, yeah, that's the same way a lot of people feel when they get high. And I was like, oh, okay. So this started me um, on the path of studying psychology a lot more because in order for me, I felt like in order for me to be the best observationist that they needed, I needed to study the subjects, but I also needed to study myself. That's when the healing started. The thing was, I wasn't healing and protecting myself. I would do one or the other. But like I said, all I knew is church. I did not know how to do anything else other than church. So although church was good, sometimes too much of a good thing is not the best thing for you. Say, for instance, water. Did you know if you overindulge in water, you can actually get drunk off of it? You really can. Um, same thing with vegetables. Vegetables are very good for you, but you eat way too many of them, your body starts reacting in an adverse way that you're like, no, I can't eat that anymore. It's not that you can't eat that thing anymore. It's that you did too much. So that's one of the things I had to heal from was workaholism. Currently, I only work one job. Yeah. And I'm phasing out on that because I want to get back into my business full time. I'm just doing that part time now and I'm just doing the prep work for phasing out so that I can do that um, full time. So I am working on my exit plan for secular work and working on my entrance plan of being a full time business owner and operator again. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm glad I was able to work through that. I'm very, very happy that I have a stepmother who loves me and she wants the best for me. And she sat me down. She was like, girl, I can't lose you like this. I need you and I need you to take care of you. And I'm glad she had that hard conversation with me because sometimes you can love somebody so much 
and you see them going through something and you don't want to say anything because what they're doing is good. It may not be the best thing for them though. And she was the one who spoke up. She did. She was the one who spoke up. She wasn't the only one who spoke up, but she was the one who spoke up, who actually sat me down and she caused me to really just look, we got to look at this. And I'm very happy about that. And it's, it's actually have it, helping me to have a better birthday celebration as I reflect on this. And as I go back into this and think about it, I actually forgot about that incident. Um, but I was going back over looking at the video that I did yesterday. And I was like, you know what? I want to talk about a con that happened with that. Those were the pros. And today I want to talk about a con. So now, you know something else that I went through, that I broke through, yeah.